Hi, this is Miguel at YRG Robotics, and I'm here with one of our RCX340 controllers with an IV2 system attached. Now, this system is available from the factory installed or can also be installed after the fact. Here's a quick little overview of the system that we have installed. Uh, the IV2 comes with two ports with uh, four CAT5 cables to go to your cameras. It also has a DVI port for you to install a monitor and monitor the pictures that are being taken. And it also has a lighting port where you can provide 24 volts and the system will trigger the lighting whenever you want to strobe for a picture. Uh, the system also works with our conveyor tracking system. That is a separate um, tracking card that can be used for uh, tracking with vision as well. As for our system that we have right here, we went with a pretty basic setup. We have uh, the what is required only. We have a CAT5 cable going to a camera, and we have a CAT5 cable going to our computer for programming, and we have a lighting 24 volts in and 24 volts out to the light. And we have our 24 volt power supply going to power the IV2 system. To that cut five cable, we have it attached on that camera up there. And this bar has a uh, T slot light for it. And looking at a system, um, as far as installation goes, most importantly is the calibration. The calibration in this system is very simple. We go back to our RCX Studio software. The RCX Studio has the built-in IV control. There is a separate IV software that you can use, or you can just use this as well. You just have to go to IV Open, and it will open the IV. And you can connect to the software. And once you are connected, It'd be a matter of teaching two models that we have similar to this. And so I will go ahead and erase this guy and start from scratch. And pretty much what we have is two images that are taught to the vision system. And so once we have those two images available to teach, we can go back to the software. And all we have to do is grab. Now I've already set it up to do that. And right now it's grabbing continuously. And every time it takes a picture, it strobes the light. On the camera, it's only showing the picture that it's taking. So it looks like it's stationary. If I stick my hand under there, we see that it is constantly taking pictures and showing what it is. And once we're ready to take uh, the image, right now we're doing image zero, so we can just say we want to use that as the image. And then we go to set parameters. The parameters can pretty much stay in as uh, is by default. No need to go into a lot of detail on those pretty much taking what angles are acceptable and not acceptable, thresholds, uh, percentages which uh, are considered found. And then as far as the contour, you can go through and use a pen to draw it individually or use the lines to go through. And there is also an auto set. And if it's a circle, we can do that and update that. And that's drawn. And if we want to add the crosshairs to it, we can also go in there to the line and draw that and go into the line and draw that and once we have done that uh, we can update and our new edge count is shown we see a thousand pixels the system shows a minimum angle of minus 45 to positive 45 just showing that if it's askew a little bit it'll still accept it as long as it's within the 45 degrees we update that, and we can set the position. And the position can be set by
just clicking on any particular pixel that you want to get the XY coordinates back uh, when you do that. And you can go zoom in up to 800% and click on that center pixel. And that's what you're going to get back to do that. And that has been set. And I can go back to the search test and search. And I'll go back to full auto fit. And it found model zero and model one search. And we're set. So we have taught the two. Uh, the same process was done with the other image. And so once we're done there, we can go back to edit mode. And we go to coordinate system, camera calibration. And we will start with calibration zero. We'll go with auto cal manual calibration simple. And it's asking me to make sure that both of those images are visible from uh, the camera. And once I go next, it'll ask me for the calibration number, camera one. It's in a fixed down direction. And then it looks for the two images as we look at what the is going on and we see that it is just taking pictures and making sure that it is finding both of the marks and those marks are found and so we just go here and it says move the robot to mark zero and so all I have to do is set my servos free so that I can pull the robot I could also use the arrows to jog it into position but typically it is easier to just drag the robot to that crosshair on that zero, that pixel I selected. And once we are there, um, we go back to software. And we are in position. We hit next. And now it's asking me to move to mark one position. So we go back to the robot and move our robot to position one. And once in position, go back to the software, hit next. And with that, it found the calibration. We finished that, yes. And we see that the camera angle has been updated um, since last we did a calibration. It's off by about 90 degrees as far as the orientation of the um, XY on the camera versus the XY on the robot. And then this is the origin of the vision versus the origin of the robot on the offset. Once that is done, we are ready to find the part. So we can go back to the IV2 and go to monitor. And as far as teaching a model, we do pretty much the same thing with it with the mark. We can go to edge and we can delete our model zero. Start from scratch and we just grab. And we see it's taking pictures. Then we can adjust to where we're nice and square with the vision and Back in the software, we can start. And we do the same deal. We select how much of the field of view we want to program in and register that. And we go to parameters, update, set contour, and we can do the auto set. And that in itself will find it. Uh, but if you do get a perfectly square part without the missing notches, then you're going to get a false positive. So what you would do is you can go in and zoom in at 400. And we'll use the free draw and draw these guys. And we can do the erase and erase that. And we'll do that to the four corners. And every time we hit update, we see that the edges get picked up in there. So you don't necessarily need to do all the edges all the time. 
you just need to update after you have highlighted the edges you want. And again, you need to be as precise as you need to be. Uh, maybe you never get anything without the uh, corner, so this may be unnecessary for your application. I'm just being thorough for the demonstration. But once we get that erased, back to drawing, and we update, change back to our full auto fit, and we have our pattern pretty much taken care of. Go to set position, and as far as setting the position, you can drag it to where you want it, or you can go to this method, and what that does, it allows you to pick edges or drag it to edges and that way from here to here you get to the center point and then from top to bottom and it just picks the center point kind of like that and you can update that and once that is done you go to vision and search and we see that we have found the part and I can go through and move it slightly and as I rotate it we search again, and it found it slightly rotated. We see the results. It's image zero, which is the one that it just took, model zero, which is what I taught, and item number, because it can do multiple items. If I had multiple parts, it could find multiple. It gives me an X, Y, and an R, and then the scale of the image versus the tot, and the score in the time milliseconds. Now we can go over to the program, and I have three pre-written programs. There really isn't a whole lot as far as programming them in. As we can see, this is a 16-line program, and I comment two lines out, so pretty much it'll do this in 14. Um, those two, if I uncomment them, then it just goes on forever. But if I do this, all it's going to do is set our monitor to uh, monitor mode, or IV to monitor mode, and then it checks where it's at. Am I close to my home position? If I'm more than five millimeters away, then we move to it. Then I do a V-search, and I'm looking for camera one, looking for model zero, and calibration zero. And then from there, it moves to that position if it found the part. If I get more than one item or more than zero, uh, then I move to that position, I wait a second, and then if I'm more than five millimeters away, then I move back home. And so as I run this, it looks like this. And I stand corrected, my servos were not off, so I'll turn them back on. And we run the program, takes a picture, and goes to the position, and comes back. If I move the part and rotate it a little bit and run the program again, it goes to the position and comes back. And again, this is a pretty simple program. If I go into something a little harder, and pretty much all this is doing is taking a picture, finding it, creating four points from the point that it found, and going in a circle around... I guess it's a 30 millimeter circle around that center point. And if I run that, oops, I think my calibration's not updated yet. So I'll update this guy to also be zero calibration and zero program. And as we can see, it creates that file, or it takes a picture, finds where the center of the part is, creates a 30 millimeter circle based on that. If I update it, run it again, and it updates that circle to go around the part.
suggest I move it even further, run it again. And now I'm out of reach. But anyway, I, I, <laughs> I digress. Uh, as you can see, the program itself is not very long and it's not very complicated. It's very simple to integrate, very simple to use our IV system. And we have gone through this in about 15 minutes. Hope that answers any questions you have for IV2. And please get in touch with us and hopefully we can get you set with one of these systems. Mm -hmm.